Chapter 5. What big ears you have. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that old lady in a hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay, well. I'm sure there is a perfectly reasonable explanation for all this. I don't think so, somehow. They just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Alright. Getting the gang back together again, or back for the first time. Oh god. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not worried. Board finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting our eyes and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's? What? <laughs> Huh? Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you just stand here acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Now for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. How would you like my eternal soul as well? Yes, please. Both looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. Ha ha ha. What's up, Mr. Nuncreed, you creep motherfucker? Look, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give him a good, hard pop right in the kisser. Oh, Gran tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you'd better run along home now. Too dark I'd be wandering on your own. I trusted you, Mr. Nuncreed. I even kinda liked you a little bit. You were a weird, creepy old perv. But that's all I thought you were. Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks under the same drink? Decaf, cappuccino, with extra foam. Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you in bright and early tomorrow. Can't wait. Sorry, I missed the entirety of that. Sometimes... My brain just can't uh, process information. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Could now done without you. Not sure about that. Nonsense. That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yeah, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't much like me, does she? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course. Regardless, I would be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks to onto her. The History Museum has a real air of import to the whole affair. We couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. <coughs> My father was a great man. Your Dan Tootin, he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. But I mean, the entire Valentine family. Present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all this? 
Gosh, I've never felt one need a uh, compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival, all of this. It's gonna be a hundred down under lockdowns out there. Why is Perino Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds. Seeds. They have little bundles of potential. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? <laughs> Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. What is he talking about? Is he talking about the freeze nuke? Probably. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the tree house is just a little further out from here. So what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo, he's Rolo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this foul harvest thing is. It's kind of a long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Oh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked, farmers loved it. So Valentine grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. <coughs> I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died and something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water, or air, or soil. Nobody knows, but all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah, Valentine fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year the crops came back, but something was different. You plant the crop, do everything right, and sort of a crap shoot what happens. And no one knows why? Nope. Take it all, us farm got the short end of the stick. Yep, for some reason their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things has gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative. Yep, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put, s put us up in hotels. One town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm. We'd better get going. They did some shady stuff to our town, didn't they? Alright, Rolo. It's about time I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. See, my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. You'll find we're spared no expenses in construction. Seen the worst looking piles of junk? Thanks. Hey, look, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test and for infiltration or something. I didn't read right. Can be too safe these days. Now we can rescind the ladder. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. What's that? Target?
moving target. I'm so good, it hurts. Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades his junk for snacks. Junk food for snacks? Nice. So? Pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Look, are we sure we can trust this new recruit? I'll watch for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, look, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine warehouse. Um, sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was uh, lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters. I don't think so. They, it seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. The man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. Keep saying it was the men. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and ran. And I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, on our way here Beck and I saw Harris Valentine meeting with Gran. Wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Out a low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit chat. It was a proper candle clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your grand in the same suit talking to Harris, Harris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude... Aliens, or alien zombies, have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your gran, and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask Gran was wearing wasn't, wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your Gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know, we haven't talked much since she moved. Moved in? Your gran isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did you know your gran before? Not really, no. It's been years since I had seen her. Look, well, don't take this the wrong way. Are we sure your gran is on up and up? Luca gazed out the window. Maybe that's not your gran, kid. Maybe gran is cooking up. Molly's in, a, in her spare time. I'm just saying, it sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. I could say the same thing about your family, but you're right. Look at your grand is hiding something, and Pa always says fox only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. We can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count in me. Count me in. Chapter six. Secret lair. Summer forged ahead. But the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Uh oh. What time is it? I'm 
Gotta put on my Christmas sweater. What is up, guys? Well, what on earth is that? Hmm? A ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this helps me think. I'm gonna need a lot more of those. <laughs> Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear. Yep, whatever she's been up to the week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. He is Sherlock Holmes. If I were Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might last expect it. Rolo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Uh huh. Coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything than dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka. She's lit a fire in order to burn evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rilla. Or maybe already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash. Okay. I'm just gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Look, is there anywhere Grand doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs? So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. And I have no idea where the key is. <coughs> if it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought I'm going to take this important thing and hack it in a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? No? She is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway, I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Alright, Rollo. This is your time to shine. Ah, uh, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. Now I shall proceed with... Finish, Lucas scrambled up Rolo's back. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining, hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. I'm like, oh hey. Let me just yank on this random teacup and Speck pulled on one of the teacups. It slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide uh -oh. under its... <laughs> Seems like a grand has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. What do we have here? Barrel mag caution explosive. Oh my god. 
Gran is a... <laughs> Gran's a freedom fighter. Or something. Jam jars. It's now jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? She wouldn't have... I, t I told you she's making mollies. <laughs> she wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. <laughs> or would she? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Only one way to find out. He casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Huckleberries. His lips. A hint of brown sugar. And ink. What? Lolo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Uh -huh. Lolo the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Miss Fratelli. And Grand Jan Graham. It says, last night I used the disguise Sarah's provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Oh man, are they going doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. Some more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. photos of people from the town interspersed with hastily scrawled notes well she sure has kept herself busy so your grand is a seller serial killer sure is because i'm starting to get a vibe don't be ridiculous sure she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart She puts little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside the big circle. The mums are both on here. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Harris has a question mark that has that's been crossed out. Hmm. Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen their next victim. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means is probably not good. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What did you get there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor. And caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? I... Here, let me help. Hello spiked the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents such as this are a lot like cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Well, I had no idea we were in the presence of the pre preeminent scholar in dense documents. And cheeseburgers, by all means, proceed. Ah, here we are. Follow up examination of Terence will be. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. Now describe soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Willby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nancreed's name. Wait. His the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water is at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. 
It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease or whatever it is progressed so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time. Spoke softly. What does it say next? The folder, trying to lose more pages. And that's where it ends. Well, there has to be more. I frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Okay, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit. The door shut. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rolla. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fold that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to the town. And if we follow it... Carefully trace the path with his finger. It leads right he to... Down at the end point. Town Square. It's the fountain in the middle of town. But we're a place to hide treasure. Hmm. Well, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. So it's not a hiding treasure? A real bummer. Well, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival. Oh. Did you say gop? This feels like a gop kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. Just gonna go <laughs> blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Oh gosh. Uh oh. What was that? What was that? I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. And they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up. The tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Hello? The final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Anyone down there? The kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. You who? I'm not here to hurt anyone. I'm just here to help. Just... Oh. I guess it's nothing. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolla, don't. Rolla was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop. With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? Corner, they saw something move. Nope, I didn't know if I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, bro, that was awesome. Or did you just kill that person? He scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground, pressing his fingers to the man's neck. He sighed with relief. We sure clubbered him good, Rolo. He's knocked out cold. Flicked back on the light. Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver. 